Today we have a French crystal regulator uh, we need to do a restoration on. This is clock is probably is from about 1890 or so, and it, it's definitely in need of an overhaul. It's a little bit dirty, and there's some wear. It is a French clock. These are a little bit more precision than, say, some of the American clocks, which can run through a lot of adversity. They can run through some wear. When these clocks start to develop wear, they tend to stop a lot sooner. Now, somebody else has overhauled this clock in the past. I see a lot of bushings here, probably completely unnecessary to to replace all the bushings I see that are replaced here because these clocks generally don't accumulate as much wear as say a comparable American clock. I want to say comparable a clock from about that time frame. Uh, the power on these clocks is usually a lot less. They're not quite as overpowered as say the American clocks are. So you just don't have the wear that you can incur in an American clock. Well, let's get started on the movement here. All right, let's begin by taking the uh, hands and dial off here. I apologize for my voice. I'm just getting over a cold. At least I think it's a cold. My son had the same thing just a short while ago, and he was uh, tested for COVID, and, and it came out negative, and I, I got it from him. But I, uh, I am keeping my distance from strangers, and I have canceled at least one house call just to be on the safe side. In case this is uh, COVID that they misdiagnosed uh, in my son. And we'll take these three pins out here. And be careful with these dials here. I'll try not to go off camera. Because they are porcelain, these dials. Okay, I'll we'll take the movement off. Put that there. I'm going to set the dial aside here. Here's our movement. Let me zoom back out with the camera. There. Yeah, relatively small, typical French movement from the uh, late 1800s. You can see this one does have a fair amount of wear. This, I don't know if you can see that or not, but put it up close. Hopefully it'll focus. But this, there's a lot of wear there, right there where the gathering pallet is. And yeah, that's just one spot. This has been, like I said previously, this has been bushed before. There's a lot of bushing I've been put in here. More than you would normally put in a French clock. Somebody overdid it in the past. That's really pretty badly worn. I'm going to hold it up close to the camera. Hopefully it'll focus on it. You can see that right there. And it's really flopping around, so that's got a lot of bushing wear. Let's let the power down. Very important to do before you do the work on any clock. We're going to release the ratchet here. Let the mainspring down on the strike side, and we're going to do the time side here. There we go. Now we can begin taking it apart. I'll start from the back, take the strike hammer off. Take the pallets out here. Now I'm going to want to take the uh, suspension spring out so uh, we make sure that no cleaning fluid can lay in there. Take that out. We can examine the suspension spring. It looks pretty good. It looks all right. I want to take this suspension spring mount off also. So 
so we don't get any fluid hiding, cleaning fluid hiding in there. Take that off, so we'll clean it, make sure we get everywhere. All right, let's take the rack off here. Well, these often have little washers, so just be wary of that. This one has a small washer here. It goes on the rack. Again, we have a washer here on the rack hook. Take that off. See if we can pry this up here. There we go. Take the R wheel off. Cannon pinion. This will pull right off. And this is the strike set off lever here. Let's see if we can get this off. Not sure which way they got this. There we are. Taper pin is a little bit bent here. That off. Slip that up. Now we're going to take off this here. The retainer for the ratchet wheel. Take the ratchet wheel off. Notice it has one little dot there on the ratchet wheel, if you can see that or not. Focus, come on. Alright, that uh, designates the ratchet wheel for the strike side, so we know. Let's take the one off on the time side here. That has no dot. So you can actually just mark these. I sometimes just scratch an S for strike and T for time on the back. But we can see that that one was already marked with a dot. Now I want to take these spring wires out here. It's a little screw. This one is for the strike shutoff lever. Take that out. These are very similar, the two of them, but I try not to get them mixed up. This one here, this is the for the hammer, high tension for the hammer. And I can tell the difference with this one because it has like a little turned up, the end of it is turned up just a little bit. Just bent up a little bit. I don't know if you can be able to see that. It went a little focus around on it. So I know that that's the strike camera one. Now we have the gathering pallet here. I can often just twist these off with my fingers. There we are. That's the gathering pallet. But be careful you don't lose that. Set that in there. It's so small. There's a lot of things on these. these French movements that are very small. Yeah, there's a bushing there that needs to be done. Let me see here if I can. I wanna, this one right here, if you just look at that, as I move the wheel next to it, if you can see that, I don't know if you're in the light or not. That's pretty bad. So we do see a lot of bushings in here, but then we do see the ones that are not bushed have a, uh, at least two of them have a lot of wear. I'm shocked that there's so many bushings in here. All the bush, the pivot holes on the back side have been bushed. It's unusual. French clocks usually don't wear, don't have as much wear, I should say.
All right, let me get some, some movement holders here. Movement stands, whatever you want to call them. And we'll just support this movement here. Incidentally, the Americans made a crystal regulator also. Uh, very similar at look. The movements are usually more, not as refined, we'll say, but they're sturdier. They're not as finely made, if I can put it that way. I don't know who copied who. Probably the Americans copied the, the French design. But crystal regulators were actually popular there for quite some time. The late 1800s. Now, today they're still somewhat popular, but they're, they're actually, as with all clocks, they're, they're, they've come down in price quite a bit. It's nowhere near as expensive as they used to be. All right, let's take these taper pins out here. Let's go do it this way. Just uh, hold the movement together. That one up or not. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll carefully lift the plate off here. This one has a lot of oil. Look at that. Looks like motor oil. Somebody probably put that in the in the main springs. Leaked out. Wow, this escape wheel is drenched with what looks like motor oil. A little too much oil. The second wheel. Don't need to really mark these because the second wheel and the uh, French movements are usually larger I want to if the if the barrels haven't been marked I might want to mark those take that wheel out it's the second wheel the strike train there's your strike shut off lever there this hammer here hammer lever. there's a shut off wheel which contains the extension for the gathering pallet Here's your fly, warning wheel, there's your uh, call a pinwheel here where these, these actually lift the hammer as it spins around. Now let's take a look at the strike. Yeah, that was marked. You can see somebody actually scratched an S on that in the past. And yeah, on this side too, that's the way I would do it. <laughs> I wonder if I did this clock in the past. Uh, I see one dot here on the winding arbor. I may just scratch a strike on the inside here. Just so we don't get those mixed up. Yeah, somebody gunked these barrels heavily with oil. It's coming out all over my fingers. Again, we have a T here and a T here. Somebody actually has scratched the T into this one, it looks like, into the winding arbor, so you don't need to do anything there. There's the center wheel. You can see all the oil throughout the movement. All right, we'll take this off here. We'll bring you over to the uh, mainspring winder here. I'll show you how we take these springs out. And we'll see how we set this up here. We're going to clamp our arbor and barrel in here. And 
and we'll need to wind it up. fit our clamp around the mainspring there. See my hands not in the way you can see what's going on. I actually slid the uh, collet into the barrel. Excuse me. Yeah. I'll show you here. You can see how the collet has captured the mainspring. I'm going to put that back here. I'm going to try to get this out of the barrel. Which I don't know why I put that back in there. There we are. Set our barrel aside. I'm going to put the uh, marber back in here. We're going to use these hooks you see down here to hook onto the main spring so we can wind it up and get it so that it loose enough that we can take this clamp off. Alright, you can see how it's hooked there. Let's just wind it up. Take our clamp off. I'm going to reverse it. I like to kind of like hold my fingers around it because sometimes it can spring up in a sideways motion. And there you go. I like the spring is telescoped a little bit. It's not too bad though. That's what happens when you pull the spring out um, without a mainspring winder. This can happen. I don't think that's enough to cause an issue. I've seen much worse, which we had to replace, but I think we're okay with that. We do the same thing with the other spring. French clock springs are not not all that powerful. The spring is pretty good. It's not telescoped at all. I did see that the end of it was kind of chewed out a little bit here. So what I might want to do is I might want to cut it. Just snip it off and re-hole it. As long as that hasn't been done too many times before to make it too short. I don't think, I think we'll be okay with this. Alright, that's all we got so far. Everything is apart. Now it's off to the ultrasonic cleaning machine. We'll bring you back when it's all been cleaned and rebushed and pivots have been polished.
right, folks, it's now the next day. I actually started uh, working on this late yesterday. So I've just seen I've done the bushing work, polished the pivots, done the bushing work, uh, taking care of everything else, uh, repair the uh, mainspring end. I just basically cut it off, as you saw in the video, and uh, put a new hole in the end of the mainspring. Uh, there was quite a few bushings in this clock, as I had mentioned before. They really kind of overbushed this in the past, whoever did it. Even bushed the, uh, the center arbor, you can see there. Uh, I've never ever had to push that bushing you know, on all the French clocks I've ever worked on. So whoever did this really, really bushed it. But there are actually were a number of bushings that were worn out already. Uh, some of the bushings they bushed, I had to reopen them a little bit or open up the holes a little bit because they were really tight. Uh, I've seen this situation before where we have, for example, retired maybe machinists or machinists who've got into the hobby who, uh, you know, their tolerances are, uh, tol tolerances are a lot closer. Um, and they just make these bushings too tight. They don't broach them out enough. So that you have to have a little bit of wiggle here on this. I'll show you about what you should have. This is the uh, one I had to broach out a little bit. You can see that. That's about what you want right there. A little bit of wiggle. You can't have it where you can't move it at all. Then that's what I had in this situation here with this one. I couldn't, it was just enough to stick in there, but that was it. You got to have a little bit of a movement there and you have to make sure you have a little bit of end shake too between the plates I'll give you an example here to show you you can't have these wheels pressed or clamped in there between the plates if you can hear that you need that little bit of end shake there else you're gonna have else you're gonna have trouble so let's go ahead and assemble this now start with the barrels actually start with the center wheel drop that in there this one is the strike this is the time barrel Got the first wheel here with the time train in and this uh, first wheel the strike train here goes there And we'll just work our way up. Pinwheel. This goes in the time train. Let's sneak that down in there. Should have put that in first. There we go. Drop that in. You see escape wheel. Wrap that in. Now we'll put the warning wheel in. No, we'll put this wheel in here. This is the wheel that the uh, gatherer gets attached to. Oops, that goes here. Now we'll put our warning wheel. And then we're going to put the fly in here. Need to drop our strike lever in here. Strike shutoff lever, I should say. That goes there. I'm going to line it so that the pin is actually lined up right there. Stop by the stop lever. We're going to slip the hammer lever in here. Well, let's see. I should have probably put that in first. There we go. I want to try to get it so that that's about where I want it, where the, the warning pin is right around where the fly is when this is engaged with the stop pin. Uh, we can always reset the pinwheel by taking that back bridge off, but these two you'd have to separate the plates, and I may still have to do that to get these indexed properly. That's the warning wheel and the, and the shutoff wheel for the strike. So we'll try to set it up as close as possible. Probably will get moved during assembly though, but we'll see. All right, and it should be everything. Let's see if we can put it together without moving too much. Okay. 
I'm going to grab a couple of taper pins here. I'm starting to get low on the uh, optimum size of brass taper pins here. Well, I'm really getting low. I'll put this one in here. Now, let's see here. lower myself here and let's see if we can just pop these wheels back into pivot holes just working from the bottom up Careful with these French clock pivots are rather delicate. Although I will say the steel is usually pretty hard. It's not easy to break them. There we go. I like to use the brass pins, taper pins, on these uh, French movements. This gives a sort of a better look than, than the con contrasting steel. Everything else is pretty much brass on these clocks, including the case and everything. So. Boy, I am really low on these brass taper pins. I'm going to have to order some more. The ones that do have are rather dull. I don't want to use these square ones here. These are more for the American. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to have to tap these in first, but most likely I'm going to have to break these plates and re-index these wheels. They almost always get moved. Let's see where we are here with this. Yep, that's in the wrong spot. So the warning pin is actually down just on the opposite side of the fan down here. And that's not a good place for it to be when your pin is locked up here. This is the, the, the locking pin for the strike train. So I've got to separate the plates and re-index that warning wheel. I always try to get it in the right spot, but almost never succeeds in getting there. We'll separate the plates a little bit here if we can. This is the most easiest thing to do. This is the toughest thing to do on a French clock. Again, being very careful with these pivots. I'm gonna separate this just enough to Move 
that pin up there. It's a little better. Unfortunately, the the warning wheel isn't the one that wants to pop out. It's the strike shutoff wheel. That wants to disengage first. That's almost there. That's perfect. I'm gonna show you here. As this thing locks right here on the strike lever, the warning pin is right there about where the fly is. So it's about halfway across, almost directly across from where the strike warning lever is, and that's what you want. What can happen is if you if you have that pin close to the strike warning lever, or actually right at the spot where the strike, it'll, it can jam up on that pin when it goes to lift. So you always want to have that pin away from that strike warning lever when you assemble it. All right, I might have to see if I can, or maybe even I'll try to clean these taper pins to make them look a little shinier because they are old, they've been in there for a while. Let's go ahead and continue assembling this here. With a bigger taper. <clears throat> I have a ton of taper pins, but not the ones I want. Of course, the ones I use often are the ones that go fit, go first. Let me see if this one will work.
signs of the previous fingerprints on here even after going through the cleaning I'm gonna try to get rid of that that's why I wear these plastic gloves here during reassembly so I don't get my fingerprints all over the nice clean movement which tends to turn brown with the fingerprints after a while especially since this is a movement that's visible through all the four panels of the glass and try to make it look neat. Start putting some oil in it before we start putting all the levers and everything on. One thing that did make this a little easier was the pivot holes that were worn actually were the ones that had been rebushed before so and somebody used a abrasion tool which is what I use so it's the same exact size there wasn't any cutting to be done it was just popping out that old bushing and pressing in the new now we're gonna put our little springs back in for the hammer and the strike shut off lever. I think that's the one that goes for the strike shut off there. <laughs> this in the right way here. A strike hammer spring. Strike lever in here. Uh, 
find a taper pin. This is our rack hook here. Let's see how that goes on. Pin has to go between these two, between the fork here of the strike set off lever. And we have a washer that goes on top of that. Gonna tap this on here. Make sure it's tight. And another taper pin. Probably have one pound of cut off taper pins in my carpet here at my shop. When I go to run the vacuum cleaner every so often, I end up with a sounds like I'm running over a, a marble collection, mm -hmm. picking up so many metal pins and objects that end up on the floor. Now we have our. winding ratchets here. Put these on here. screws for this. These two here I believe. I was contemplating putting music to the entire video. Perhaps you could let me know in the comments if you think that's something you would like. I, I find music to be distracting when I'm watching a how-to video on YouTube. I normally don't like it. Um, but it, it may be the popular thing to do. So you let me know in the comments what you think. Should I be putting music to these videos? A little bit of background music? Yeah, you can drop a comment down there let me know. Be grateful. All right, we're going to put the cannon pinion on there. It's got like a little dot right here. If you can see that or not. It's going to line up with a dot here on the uh, arrow wheel. But first I'm going to put a little drop of oil here on the back side of this arrow wheel, but right here on the pivot. It's an area you can forget to lubricate. You can see the two dots there. Hopefully you can see them, how they're lined up.
And we're gonna take our arrow wheel. Once again, you see we have a dot there on the arrow wheel. We're gonna line that up with a pinion here. I should call this the ratio wheel here. And this really is the snail, not the arrow wheel. It kind of is the arrow wheel. Anyway, let's go ahead and put this on. And hopefully, we'll find that we don't have to re index the snail at all. That's the screw that goes there. And we'll put a drop of oil here. Now we do have to put the, uh, let's see, let's put the rack on here. But we also want to put the gatherer on. Again, we need to be careful with this gatherer. Working with these gloves sometimes is a bit of a hindrance with smaller parts like these. Put this washer on here. And we'll find another taper pin. I'm not so concerned about brass pins here. This is the uh, back or the front side of the movement where you, uh, it's behind the dial, which you, uh, you won't see these, these pins here. So we'll just put our steel ones on here. You can find one that fits. Looks like I'm going to have to replenish some of the more common or popular sizes I use with these paper pins and the steel ones also. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there's one. side. Let's 
drop some oil in the back side here. Put a drop of oil in here. It might be hard to get to this pivot hole with the uh, suspension spring holder on here. And again, maybe not. pallets in here. These look good. They didn't need to be polished. See, they actually even put a pivot hole or pivot or pushing in the pallets too, which not something you have to do very often on a on a French clock, if at all. But it seems okay. Put a drop of oil in this side in here. The front side where the pallets pivot hole is. We'll put a little bit of oil on the pallets. You'll notice I did take the hammer head off here when I went to clean this. I didn't want to damage the leather that's that's there in the hammer head. Would have to replace it if I did leather that's in here still in pretty good shape so we'll just put the hammerhead back on here that didn't need to be cleaned anyway pins here. Mm, I'm wasting too much time looking for taper pins. Let's see if that'll fit. Once again, folks, thanks for bearing with me. My voice is still not completely returned. Yesterday it was even worse. You might hear it today. It sounds like it may be a little bit better from that cold that I had. Don't think it was COVID. My son had it and he was tested and he got, came back negative. So I'm assuming it wasn't COVID. And 
if it was, so be it. That means I'm at least going to be immune to it for a little while. Okay, let's <clears throat> put some power on it. See what we get. spring here oh, we'll test it out And tension feels a little loose. I'm going to just tighten it up a little bit and show you how to do that. We're just going to squeeze this a little bit. Not much pressure, just a little bit. to make it feel a little tighter. Again, we align those dots up. Feels a little better.
We'll just check the snail to make sure it's indexed properly. I'm going to go all the way around. That's the 11 o'clock there. Twelve o'clock position on a snail. Good, that's one o'clock. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Can put the suspension spring back in. I'm going to show you guys a pendulum on this. This is actually mercury, true mercury inside here. Uh, pretty toxic stuff, actually. Uh, I remember years ago I worked for a company down on the main line, and um, we had this stuff actually literally rolling around in the back of his car from spillage from barometers, and not realizing. Uh, how this stuff can actually uh, evaporate into the uh, surrounding area if and when you breathe it in, that's when it's most dangerous. And I must, I must have breathed in tons of this stuff in my younger years. Yeah, and this stuff can cause permanent brain damage. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> it didn't in me, but some people was, would probably say, "Well, that's the reason." Anyway, the mercury is actually here to help regulate the time. How, the way it works is. The pendulums expand and contract with the heat and the cold and due to the changes of seasons you're going to get that. And when the pendulum expands, the mercury expands upward, thereby keeping the center of oscillation in roughly the same area. Of course, you have to have the right amount of mercury. These vials are sealed, so there's very little chance of this mercury escaping. But I have... Uh, Reservations about working with any larger pendulums with open valves or mercury anymore. The stuff substance is so toxic. If I were to spill this here in the shop, the shop is in my house, we would have like a, a toxic cleanup situ situation. And also mercury is very, very expensive now. So if I were to, say, accidentally dump somebody's mercury vial from their pendulum, I would not be able to afford to replace it for them. So these kind of pendulums, well, crystal regulator is no problem. They're sealed. But when it comes to some of the larger regulator clocks with mercury, I'm, I'm almost kind of shying away from taking those in for repair anymore because of the, you know, the nature of, of, of working with mercury. Anyway, just thought I'd bring that up. All right, you can see what it looks like here. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the uh, strike function here. I'm going to turn the minute hand around. It's a half hour. Let me zoom in a little bit on it so you can see the function. Notice how the snail it's not stepped, it's smooth. Pretty common on, on most of these French clocks. It doesn't need to be stepped as long as the uh, rack drops the right distance. I 
That was five. Let's bring it around here. It's uh, five thirty. Very similar operation, if you remember uh, the previous video I did with the uh, American clock. Same type of round movement. Uh, but it was American made, of course. But the operation is very similar. You see, you have your rack and your snail when you're gathering pellet. I'll let it run in this uh, test stand for a little bit. But I'll bring you back a little while later when I have the clock completely assembled so you can see uh, the clock what it looks like when it's fully assembled. All right, folks, that'll do it for uh, today's video. If you like the video, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to content on the channel, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe notification. And if you do, make sure you hit that bell notification to let you know when I'll be uploading another video. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next video. Take care and be good. Bye-bye.